Well, hello, Holer and Howdy, and welcome to Power Up Gaming Plays. I'm your host, Adam Lloyd, and joining me today, we have everyone's favourite Irish news writer. It's Scott Russell. Say hello there, Scott. Hello. Uh, uh, you call me Irish, but I'll, I'll get over that. Uh, <laughs> you'll be for all the right. Sake of the, for the sake of this friendship and this video, <laughs> I'll get over it. <laughs> Near enough. Come on, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, um, now today, uh, for those of you who are observant enough to read the title of the video, uh, we're going to be playing The Order 1886, or more like we're going to be discussing The Order while playing it in the background. Um, now, the reason we wanted to do this, um, not only is The Order quite a contentious game, um, but we both seem to have drastically differing opinions on it. Um, I mean, what, what do you think, Scott? Do you think uh, we're, we're quite polar opposites on this? Um, well, I wouldn't say polar opposites. I mean, I'm not giving it a an 11 out of 10 or anything. It's, it's yeah, I would definitely well, give it a higher yeah. score than what you gave it. I mean, I would probably give it more more of an 8, you know, somewhere around there. Not not perfect by any means, but it. I think your complaints are definitely with the gameplay, right? The That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's uh, it's more about the um, the gameplay design more than anything that I struggled with. Um, in the in the in, uh, review that I did for the website, uh, which I'll plug again, PowerUpGaming.co.uk, um, it's well um, I did give the game a score of five point five, um, which it's something I stand behind. But um, um, on one hand, technically the game is pretty much faultless if you ask me i mean in terms of the visual design um it, it seems pretty unparalleled especially on the platform that it's on um i mean um for a playstation 4 title um this would have been perfect as you know one of those first titles that came out uh, around the yeah. console's launch yeah um to me it seems a little bit like rise for the um mm. xbox one um, do you know what I mean? It's more of a graphical yeah, showcase yeah. than anything else to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the actual presentation of the game, um, as I say, everything just seems to work, um, which yeah. is it's something of a rarity at the moment. Um, we're not getting that many AAA games that just work out of the box. No, no um, definitely. This is, like, it runs pretty much flawlessly. Like, I mean, there's... Is virtually no like I, I think there were some bugs for some people but for me anyway there were no like hitches in the gameplay like n no like stuttering like no frame no. skipping anything like that and it it looks beautiful and I mean like they've done a pretty good job of keeping the game you know technically sound you know we can run run some horses here like like I can I, I like the way he runs he's got a <laughs> he's got kind of a jaunty run you know yeah definitely a Victorian run into it. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, in terms of the animation, it's uh, it's fantastic as well. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this as well, but um, you know, in in terms of you know when you're ducking in and out of cover, um, you know when you're running up to walls, there's no clipping or anything like that. No, no. You know that 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 might be something that's a bit more last gen, maybe. But you know, in terms of the world that they create, it just seems very cohesive, and it all seems to work. Um, which, as I say, you know, is actually something of uh, a surprise these days. You kind of almost expect games to be uh, broken out of the box, and then you have to wait a month. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even Dying Light, I, I like that a lot. But I wrote in my review, um, there there are some like kind of crazy moments with the because it's it's obviously a very fast game, and like you're always like missing jumps and like kind of glitching over objects. It's the same with Assassin's Creed. Like, those games are terrible for that sort of thing. Um, but they're, yeah, but definitely. They're, they still have a lot of gameplay to back that up, which I think is the main problem with here. You know, there's no gameplay to, like, reinforce the, like, the way the game looks or, you know, the way it feels, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> I think this is the problem um, with the order. It's, it seems that, um, I mean, they've created a very technically... Uh, impressive game here um, and also I don't know about you but I didn't find the story um, that bad uh, I didn't no. I didn't expect anything coming into it to be honest um, you know it just sounded like you know a typical run-of-the-mill kind of shooter with 
that happened to have a few werewolves in. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah th- there was something about it that I actually found quite compelling. Like uh, lifting these items up and turning them over. That's that's compelling. (laughs) (laughs) Well, look at that. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) You can almost see the saliva on that. (laughs) (laughs) He he really looks stunning with a pipe. And I'm sure he he has a few. (laughs) A few pipes. Put that pipe down. I don't know. I I could look at that pipe all day. (laughs) Um, <laughs> trying to beat up the purr. Yeah. <laughs> trying to um, fight the peasants. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's coming up soon, isn't it? Um, is, um, we should say we're going to spoil uh, this. Probably spoil the story somewhat, if not all of it. So if you. Yeah, that's definitely something I forgot to mention. Um, there probably will be some spoilers, um, especially yeah. as we start to get onto the plot a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, how did you find the story? I like the story a lot. I like I like this little moment. This is good. This yeah, is, this is yeah. it isn't a key moment in the story, but I like the little. There's there's lots of little humorous bits in it that I thought worked well between the characters. I really like the characters. Um, I yeah. can put an apple around in my hand if I want. Uh, that is a pretty good <laughs> looking apple. Though. Um, I like the uh, I like the little the little group that they have. You know, the four of them. Um, I think they're entertaining, and I like. I like the idea of the, the villains. Obviously, the Lycan fights are kind of shitty. Um, yeah, definitely, yeah. But I think the idea of having a world like that is pretty pretty incredible. I think what they've done with that has worked nicely, and even including vampires in it, which is, you know, I, I, I kind of, that was kind of unexpected, actually. I didn't, I knew it was about yeah. werewolves, but I didn't think vampires were part of it. Yeah, well, this is it. Um... I know it sounds a bit weird for a, a bit of a fantasy setting like this where there are mythical creatures running riot, but yeah. I didn't actually expect there to be vampires in it. <laughs> um, yeah. m- maybe I just figured, wonder... you know, y- you can't have room for both unless you're Twilight, but um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think they handled it quite well. Um, yeah, it's sort of, I wonder, like, what, like, if, I think they're definitely doing a sequel. I think it's, it's already, I, I can imagine they've already greenlit a sequel. If they've made an ending the way they have, they were probably anticipating a sequel regardless of how the game sold, I think. So, it makes me wonder what other kind of creatures could be in a sequel, which is kind of exciting, like what else could they have? Like a a griffin, maybe? That would be quite cool. (laughs) Yeah, just ride on the back of a narwhal or something, although they are actually real, but... (laughs) Right right on the back of a stegosaurus rex, I don't know, making up dinosaur names now. Yeah. Stegosaurus Rex, yeah. I mean, that's um, that's probably going to be in Jurassic World, actually, because they do tend to splice their dinos a little bit. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're probably going to go down the route of, um, you know, not only are you going to be fighting werewolves, but you're going to be fighting vampires as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that I imagine, you know, there are going to be um, moments where vampires are the main enemy, perhaps. You know, I, I think it's kind of heading in that direction. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, in terms of what what we were saying earlier about the um, the, the way the characters are designed, I mean, um, the um, the French guy I can't remember his name off the top of my head now. Uh, uh, is it Lafayette? Lafayette. Yeah. yeah, Lafayette. Yeah. Um, there's a moment where um, he gets the monocular, um, and he just kind of puts it in his pocket with like a little bit of a cheeky grin on his face, yeah. and you just know he's going to basically use that for perving on people. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's like you know the the way that they haven't expressively said that um, yeah, really yeah. works, um, and yeah, I think they've done quite a good job with the voice acting as well. Um, Galahad seems well, when he when he gets angry is quite formidable, um, yeah, yeah. and he gets angry, he gets angry a lot, angry doesn't lot. he? Yeah, yeah. He does. he's 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 a new creator, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that mustache can't uh, can't hide. Yeah, he can't hide his anger. Um, I mean, th- there's that one point on the bridge where he just literally punches that guy to death because he can't tell him any information. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's, he's punching got... him, just screaming, just going, give me some answers, give me some answers. But it's think, just like yeah. this guy just cowering. And... <laughs> yeah, I think at the end of the day, though, he's a pretty stand-up guy. I mean, he he does want to do good, I think, whereas Kratos is just kind of like, Athena! Like, 
you know, constantly. <laughs> where, whereas Galahad's kind of like, uh, I want, I want to help these people. But I, I don't yeah. know the accent. That's not a direct quote, but I mean, he, <laughs> he's, he's trying to be good, I think. Yeah, I think so. He's got a sense of purpose and, uh, you yeah, know, okay. knows right from wrong. Um, like how he wants to get into the uh, the East India Trading Company without killing people and, yeah. you know, sets up a stealth section. But, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of, uh, in fact, mentioning Kratos, did you notice the Easter eggs uh, in uh, the game? I saw the sack boy, um, but I know yeah. there's a Kratos poster, but... Um... I'm yeah, I think it's that. on the way to the hospital. It's um, it's in the underground section just before. Um, it's, oh, okay. I think all it says, it just says, like, Kratos cycles, ride like a god or something like that. But, okay. you, you know, obviously t- trying to tie into other Sony properties there. Yeah, um, yeah. I quite like that yeah. lockpicking. Um, that's, I felt like that was quite a good way to lockpick. It was quite different yeah. using the vibration on the controller. That was quite a good idea. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously, you get the feedback. You you know, you, it's not more much of a visual thing. You know, you you kind of rely yeah. on the vibrations of the controller to feel your way through the lock, as it were. So uh, think, which yeah, it's like, a good idea. Like, yeah, what you're saying, like uh, early, this movie should have been an earlier PS4 game, and then it would have, I don't know, kind of showed off what this game can do in terms of the PS4 system. Like, I mean, like it would show the graphics off. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. show how well it runs and show how the controller can be used and the, how the touchpad can be used and all that sort of thing. Like it should have been, it should have been that sort of game, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, almost like a tech demo maybe, but obviously yeah, a bit more yeah. highly polished than that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it could sort of, um, you know, extol the virtues of, you know, using this particular controller and this this system. You know, it, it would have been really good if it had come out. Um, you know, around the time of the launch, really. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I think there are a lot of good points to this. And you know, mentioning the sequel, um, despite the low score I gave it, I would really like to see a sequel to this game. Yeah, me too. Um, I think um, if they can actually expand on the gameplay, which we're going to get into in a second, um, if they can actually expand those elements, you know. A sequel yeah. would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah Are you still definitely up for it? Sorry. Can you still, can you still see this? Um, no, no, I've lost it. No, um, okay. <laughs> should, we, should we restart it or uh, just keep going? Um, I'll try and join you again, but we'll keep going. All right, sure. <clears throat> no problem. There's some breasts happening, by the way. I don't know if Chris has the ability to get rid of those, but there, there are some breasts. Oh yeah, story. that. That's a good point because, um, yeah, uh, in, in um, halfway through the game, there's the penis section. There, there are a lot of penises, <laughs> to be fair. That, yeah, that's if, a, yeah, there's bit. a couple actually. Yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, and... I mean, we haven't actually seen that many penises in games. I don't think there was that one in The Lost and Damned for Grand Theft Auto Four. Uh, uh, yeah, I never played that. Yeah. Yeah, there was just there's one in that, but there's, there's like a movie. Yeah, I, like I the think scene. this. I think this was uh, the very first penis in a game that I've actually seen. Um, really? So oh. I've kind of lost my gaming penis virginity. How do you feel about <laughs> that? Um, uh, mixed emotions, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed <laughs> it wasn't Galahad's, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I think well, I would like know, to see yeah. a bit of that. In fact, that that is something. When I was playing the game, um, my girlfriend walked in. Um, yeah. And I think I was playing that bridge section, you know, where he's in the, uh, you know, he's in his night armor and everything, and like his little capes flowing. Um, and she was <laughs> like, "Oh, what, what's what's this you're playing?" So I said, "Oh, it's uh, it's the order. It's um, set in uh, Victorian game. England." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she was like, like, "Oh, like... is it a period costume? Oh, I might like to play this." I'm oh. like, "Okay, th- this this is basically porn for you, then, isn't it?" <laughs> here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, here it comes! Literally. Yeah, I, I, I like this little scene. There was a little bit of humor there. She like, she like, hello, and then Lafayette <laughs> just waves at her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello, Gaff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As, as much as we've said we like the voice acting, I'm not sh- not so sure about that woman, to be honest with you. 
Yeah, she's, she's probably, doing the best. Yeah, yeah the best that, Nancy that from Oliver. Actress. Yeah, that voice actress <laughs> is probably at the bottom of the Thames by now. <laughs> that, that, she should be so disappointed in her performance. Yeah, it's got a bit of Thames tummy, I think. But yeah. um, Christ. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a, like a, a way to get rid of a baby. <laughs> Oh god! Enough of that. Let's <laughs> let's, let's move on. Let's topic. move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, quick time events. Quick time events. Perfect. Quick time events. Um, the elephant in the room. Um, quick time <laughs> events are ninety percent of gameplay, if you ask me. Mm. Um, mm. and uh, I, this is something I said in the written review as well on the site. Um, it's uh, it does remind me of um. A little bit of Pirates of the Caribbean, um, Dead Man's Chest. Did, did you ever play that? <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I World's End. Sorry. And another, um, another game that Johnny Depp would ruin if he yeah. was actually in it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, he would ruin the order if he was Sir uh, Galahad. Um, but and yeah, um, the thing with Pirates is, I mean, it, it was a obviously a second rate movie tie in. Um, but what it did, it had sh- very short action sections, and then it sort of tied it all together with quick time events. So it, right. it kind of it, it didn't trust you to sit back and listen to the story. It had to, you know, oh hit X, hit Y to uh, you know zip down a line or something. And if you if you weren't really precise, then it was over. Um, and the order does this a lot. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but um, I found on occasion sometimes the quick time events had, you know, just come out of nowhere. Um, yeah. And obviously there's not really any context for them because, you know, there's no um, action on the controller to, you know, kick a guy in the head normally while you're being strangled from behind. So you yeah. don't expect that to come up generally. Um, and I ended up failing quite a few times because I have the rea- reaction speeds of a um, decapitated walrus. But, mm-hmm. I mean, how did you find them? Did, you know, did they break it up for you at all? Um, I don't really think I had a, a problem with them in that way. I think the problem was that there were too few of them. Like too spread, few like, of them? Like, spread... No, not too few of them, but I mean, <laughs> they would have... <laughs> no, not, that's not exactly what I meant. I meant, uh, like, they would happen... <laughs> I, like random dispersed moments, <laughs> like uh, I, I let, let's say that in a different <laughs> way. Um, that they would happen, not like not often enough to make them, a like I don't know a proper mechanic. Like you would have a cutscene that was five or ten minutes long, and then throughout that you would maybe have two uh, quick time events. Like I thought they were a lot yeah. of them in the gameplay, but in the ones that are in the cutscene specifically are too spread apart. To make them really worthwhile like you don't have you're not like usually chaining them together for like god of war uh, something like that like they like when kratos is finishing off a boss or whatever he'll um he'll do like 10 in a row maybe whereas this is just yeah. like one every so often like during a cutscene, which is just like what does that really add like why not just let us watch the cutscene? um uh but yeah during yeah. the gameplay it's sort of like I, I don't know. They, if they're going to do them in the cutscenes, maybe don't do them in the gameplay or vice versa. Like, just leave them, maybe. You know. Yeah, I, I think you've got a good point. Or... Yeah. Yeah, you've definitely got a good point there. And that's not really something I'd considered because um, maybe the reason why I struggled with the quick time events so much was because I'd been used to sat, you know, sitting there just watching for yeah. two or three minutes. Yeah. Um, I mean that that is something I did find. Um, you know, there, there was some problems with the pacing of the story as well. Um, yeah. You know, as you're coming up to you know the second act, as it were, um, mm. just as you're starting to get into your stride about chapter five, chapter six, maybe, um, just after the Zeppelin and everything, um, you know, you, you've started to learn the controls. You know, you you feel pretty comfortable in what you're doing, and it gives you a big stretch where you do actually. You know, do a lot of gameplay. You, you fight a lot of people, um, and then all of a sudden, you've got two or three chapters worth of cutscenes. Um, yeah. You know, it, it just really puts you in the back seat again and just makes you watch. Um, yeah, yeah. And and that was a bit of a problem I found with it in terms of you know, Ready at Dawn have made this beautiful world, but they don't allow you to play with it. They don't want you to touch it. 
<laughs> it's like it, we've we've made this beautiful thing. You know, you you must stand behind the velvet rope and you know don't sneeze on it. Whatever you do, for God's sake. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, like if you're if you're in the Louvre, you know you can look at the Mona Lisa, but you can't you can't throw orange juice at it or anything. I mean, like they're not they're not like <laughs> they, they, they you pay the twenty five euro to get in, but you can't like you can't draw on it with a Crayola, you know. Something I don't know. Like that. I mean, what I are you paying for? Good. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I definitely was paying to ruin a priceless piece of art, but... Um, yeah, I, I only went I mean. in there to lick the Mona, Mona Lisa, and they just wouldn't <laughs> let me do it. I, yeah. I ended up spending yeah. a night in the cell, but there you go. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, I, I mean, did, did you find that a little bit disjointing in that regard? Uh, it, was, it was a bit strange that I would get, you know, it would come up like chapter 10... And then, like it would be just it would just be a cutscene, and then it would go into chapter eleven, which would be gameplay, like yeah. Or sometimes it would be two chapters back to back, which were just cut. Like you'd have a chapter that was a cutscene, and then a chapter that was just going to Niccolo or Niccolo's like workshop or whatever. Like I don't know. And then you would have maybe like a chapter of gameplay that would go on for like like almost two hours, which would. I don't know. Like, <laughs> they didn't pace the chapters very well, which makes me think, like, why do they even bother doing chapters in the first place? Like, or, like, why why just give a chapter number to, like, a cutscene? Like, is that really a chapter? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that's also a good point, because, um, I mean, the first couple of chapters are quite long, um, yeah. and then all of a sudden you've got a very short one, which is, you know, just, like, a two-minute cutscene. Um <laughs> You know, when you first, when you complete like the first chapter, you think, um, "Oh, well, maybe if there's 16 chapters in this game, it's going to take quite a while." Yeah. Um, you know, when it's taking you an hour and a half to finish the first one, but then you start knocking through them in rapid yeah, succession, yeah, and yeah. you know that starts to uh, cut the length down a little bit. Yeah, um, I mean, there's really only like four or five chapters that are quite long that are proper gameplay sections. Like, I mean, there's this one in the hospital and the blimp and the like the the warehouse one with the vampires and um yeah like the the one at the end in the orders i think it's in the houses of parliament is that correct adam i i would not know <laughs> um you know more about it oh than yeah me? yeah r right yeah. right at the end when you just um, break out of prison yeah i mean there so there's really only like five or six locations that are substantial yeah. chapters well know, there's the like, um um, there's um, Lord Hastings' house as well. When yeah, you break yeah in that there. was actually um, quite a good one. Um, you didn't yeah. like the stealth, though. Yeah. Oh, no, no, definitely the, not. The, Again, the, I, I think that's my old deaths. man fingers, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, inf the instant deaths were a bit annoying, because it was like, okay, I've, I've killed these three guys, and I'll kill this fourth guy. Oh, wait, no, he's going to... He's gonna instantly see me, and then I'll die, and then I'll have to do the first three again. You know, like there were there were no checkpoints of those sections, and I died a few times, and it was kind of frustrating. You know, thankfully there weren't yeah. that many. Yeah, I, I mean, I did wonder whether I would just get annoyed because you know I'm just bad at the game, so I'm quite glad to hear that somebody else had the same problem. Yeah, um, it was like you were this immortal order knight, but then one guy would shoot you in the chest with a pistol, and then that would be you dead instantly. Yeah. Really sense. Well, that's it. I mean, the stealth sections, as soon as you get seen, um, someone just whips out a pistol and shoots you in the head straight away. Um, yeah. Which, okay, yeah, you, you know, you're not going to come back from that even, you know, the knights have the black water, which basically heals them and gives them a long life. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in, in a game where you do get peppered with bullets at every opportunity, you know, you stick your head out, you get, you know, one in each eye and another one for good luck. But, um you know, you know, you, you, the knights just drink that away um, and yeah. revitalize themselves, and then all of a sudden you reach a point where everyone um, is suddenly a sharpshooter and can, you know, nip you in the brain before you've even got a chance to react. Yeah, I know. Um, like these, I'm getting shot a lot here, and I mean, I'm not dying at all, so it's, it's kind of yeah. inconsistent, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, the the actual shooting sections, as fun as they are, you know, you don't run into as many instances of where you just absolutely get killed you know um there was one i did section, get down um, once or twice but yeah yeah there's one where you set the warehouse on fire with the vampires and um 
and then there you you fall you go down like a little elevator thing and you need to you need to wait until the woman I can't remember her name the Indian woman she um um yeah she's gonna set the coffins on fire and you need to wait until she does that and there were just kind of swarms of enemies which I died a few times with that I think that was maybe the only difficult section that I that I had yeah I I don't think I had many problems with that but I think um you get um. Uh, I can't remember whether it's the thermite rifle you get at that point or an, another heavy weapon, but I managed to find that um, if I kept hold of that, I could plough through them quite easily. Uh, um, yeah, I just sort of carried that from, you know, the outside bit where you're on the boat. Um, oh yeah. There's a heavy weapon you can pick up there, and uh, I carried it with me and just used the ammo boxes to fill it up. Oh, yeah, um, good idea. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, if you're willing to keep hold of those heavy weapons, it does make the game a little bit easier even. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fuck insta kill stealth sections. <laughs> I, I just couldn't couldn't handle them at all. Um, uh, how how long did it take you to play through it? Do you think? Um, I would say maybe about eight hours. I think that's yeah somewhere, somewhere around that. Yeah, I, I'd say probably around seven or maybe maybe even getting on for eight uh, in my yeah. playthrough. Uh, and I'd say a good two hours were just trying to get past the self stealth sections. <laughs> Um, so there you go. But, six six hours of quality gameplay and uh, two of shit. <laughs> yeah, but then there's three hours of cutscenes in there as well. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were That's talking on the podcast about that last week, I think, or whatever episode seven about um, the order. Maybe I think it was the one right after where I'd beaten it. Oh, I died. Great. Um, oh yeah. And Austin was saying about. Uh, my love for Metal Gear Solid 4. So I think that's why <laughs> I don't have such a big issue with the cutscene, like, quick time events, gameplay, yeah. like, ratio. Like, I, I don't really have a problem with that because of Metal Gear Solid 4. Because really, that's 15 hours of cutscenes with, like, 5 hours gameplay in it, you know. It's <laughs> not yeah, that much. I've, you've definitely got a point. Um, and, I mean, I absolutely love the Metal Gear series as well so you know yeah. maybe I'm not one to talk about um, lengthy cutscenes getting in the way but um, yeah. I think with Metal Gear if, you, if you're the kind of person who's played from the first Metal Gear Solid at least yeah. um, like I have then you know you've kind of grown to expect it and the cutscenes have crept in you know they've, they've become longer and longer as the series has gone on yeah. um, so by that point you care about the story quite a lot um, but I think yeah. in this, they, they could have cut that back a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. You know, actually let you get a bit more immersed in the world before telling you facts about it. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I, I think that's um, that's part of the problem. Um, you know, the, the Order yeah, yeah. wants to, you know, tell you something and show you something. It doesn't want to let you interact with it very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know. And I think uh, with Metal Gear... Uh, specifically, the, at least um, Hayao Kojima is kind of changing what Metal Gear used to be. I mean, like, even with Peace Walker, it, um, it's very gameplay focused, I would say now. Like, it's all about, like, small missions that you can play over and over again with different scenarios. And Metal Gear Solid yeah. 5 is supposed to be 200 hours long with, like, a huge open world. So, obviously, <laughs> he's changed his game for, like, the climate in which the game is being yeah. released in, you know, whereas this is sort of very much still, it's like Metal Gear 1, you know, like that game is probably six, seven hours, maybe, at the same, like, you know, similar length to this. Um, yeah. So it feels like maybe it hasn't evolved past that level, which is why it gives, like, such a jarring feeling, you know. Yeah, but I, I would also argue that games like Metal Gear, um, I do think they probably still have more gameplay, or at least longer gameplay sections in them than The Order does. But also, there's a little bit of freedom around how you tackle it. You know, you can, oh, yeah. uh, if you want to sneak into a base, you can climb through a vent, you can jump in the back of a truck, you can, you know, shoot your way in, grab hold of guards, you know, um, that kind oh, of thing. Yeah. But with this, you know, you, you've kind of got tunnel vision for the most of the game. You know, you, you, you've got your set path, you know where you're going. Um, everything's clearly telegraphed, you know, the uh, the doors, the, the one door that you can go through has a big triangle <laughs> over it telling you where to go. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's it's not very um, freeing gameplay, uh, for oh, want right. of a better term. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, what did you think of the the world that they've created, like this uh, alternate history uh, sort of thing they've got going on? What do you think of that? Um, I, again, I think um, reading the pre-release material, I thought it sounded a bit maybe generic fantasy kind of thing. Um, but um, now that I've had a chance to play through it, um, I think the story is actually quite good. Um, and I don't know whether that's more the presentation of it. You know, it's beautifully presented. Um, it's, you know, the, the dialogue generally is, is all right. It's not cringeworthy as I expected oh. it to be. So it, it was quite a pleasant surprise. And I think some of the voice acting in the main nights um, really helps propel that along. Um, yeah. I would say it's it's a little bit like the polar opposite of Dishonored for me, in that um, in Dishonored I really liked the gameplay, but I thought the story was shit. Um, mm. <laughs> this time I feel like uh, in the order the uh, the gameplay is the shit part and the story is the good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a polar opposite of you know a Vict an alternate Victorian London setting uh -huh. maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I um, hate Dishonored all round, so I, I, don't, I don't know what to say about it. that. I, yeah, yeah. I hate that game. I, oh, Jesus. That game. That's, that's for another yeah. time. That. It's just, it's, oh, no, it doesn't, doesn't gel with <laughs> it at all. Yeah, getting off topic, but I, I did struggle with it, personally. Um, yeah. Only towards the end did it click, but yeah, I think you're right. That's a topic for another time, really. Yeah. Um, I like so, the, I like the history. Um, I'd like to see more of that. I think, uh, like, uh, possibly if they're going to do a sequel, maybe have sections in the past with King Arthur and that sort of thing. See what happened there. You know that sort of thing. That's what I would like. Yeah. To I'd like to see yeah. that as well as seeing uh, Galahad back with the with an even better moustache. You know. <laughs> and an even longer cape. Yeah, um, and more pajamas. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot about them. Those fetching striped pajamas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you've got a point. And um, the order kind of it, it hints at some of the past events. You know, it says that um, the knights have lived for centuries, and you know, suggests that's the Blackwater. Um, <laughs> and but it doesn't really uh, delve into that too much in the actual game. I mean, where did the black water come from? You know, where, um, they seem to have a font full of it. You know, does that get replenished or do they run out eventually? You know, there's there's a lot of things that aren't explained. And, you know, that that leaves people hungrier. And, you know, that might be where a sequel could yeah. jump in and, and really make, make a name for itself. Yeah, I think they could, they could go pretty far with this. I mean... Obviously, I don't. I don't want them to do it to death, like Assassin's Creed. But they could do a similar <laughs> thing to that. Like, I mean, they could have the order like 1917. They could have it in World War One. They could have it in World War Two. That would be pretty interesting to see what they're doing there. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be quite interesting to see. Um, you know, especially if they tried to um, <laughs> wrap the vampires and werewolves around the Nazis. Maybe you know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah it'd One be thing quite that did annoy me. One thing that did annoy me though was that they said the Ripper killings were from that vampire, and oh, the, yeah. the Ripper. I don't. I don't know if Ready at Dawn realized this, but the Ripper murders happened in 1888, not 1886. So I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that was such a big point for them to get across. Like they're like, okay, uh, we can't make it in 1888 because that doesn't sound as good. So we'll put it in 1886, but we'll throw the Ripper murders in there anyway. Like, I mean, yeah. fair enough, it's alternate history, but it's not fake history. Like, I mean, I don't know, that was kind of strange to me. Like, it didn't really make any sense why he yeah, was the Yeah, chuck it in. Yeah, he'll be fine. It was around that era. Yeah, I mean, two, <laughs> two years before, that was even a thing, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just respect those poor women that died, but all right. It'll, it'll be fine. Yeah, throw a vampire <laughs> in there. <laughs> Okay, so, um, I mean, finally, um, I mean, I, I feel like I've talked a lot about what I liked and didn't like, but, uh, I mean, you said you would give it an 8 out of 10. Um, yeah. You know, what, what, um, what do you think really worked that would, you know, push that score score up to, uh, you know, that point? Um, well, 
the gameplay really, I don't know, it didn't bother me that much. Obviously, not as much as you do. I can see where I, I, I obviously like 100% see um, where your complaints lie. But for me, uh, it just like I thought. I felt like it, it was fun enough that it didn't bore me. If you, you know, it, it like it may not be the most sophisticated or you know, the most original gameplay, but I think at the same time it was still uh, enjoyable while I was doing it. You know, I was quite like I was having quite a fun time with it. Um, and coupled with the story and the presentation as well, I thought you know it deserves a bud and about an eight. But I can I can totally see where you're coming from um, with your okay. points. Well, yeah, I think uh, I think that's quite a comprehensive discussion there. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you're happy, shall we uh, shall we leave that one there? Yeah, I'm just I'm looking around with a a monocle thing right now. Oh, you got your binocular yeah. out. Yeah. I thought, I thought about, uh, Lafayette is about to say something. He's about to pinch it, maybe. Oh, right. <laughs> maybe that's later. I think that's yeah. later on. There's, there's one thing. There's a, there's a huge tar in this game, and it looks a bit like the spire, but I don't, they've never explained what that is. Oh, like a, yeah. I know like what you huge, mean. Yeah. Thick building that they have here, and they, mm. they never go into what that is at all. Yeah, I, f I figured, um, yeah, you see that right at the beginning, and I thought they'd kind of explain that, but they just don't, do they? No, yeah, they don't. They don't. They leave that hanging. A lot. They leave a lot of things hanging, including the vampire guy who's the main villain. They just let him go, uh, which is nice. Well, yeah, you've, you've got to have somewhere to go for a sequel, haven't you? Yeah. So, um... I felt like, yeah, that, that definitely makes me think that... Uh... That we we will we will be getting a sequel because they've kind of left it on a cliffhanger almost, you know. And I kind of got the vibe that they're gonna go open world. I don't know why, but I feel like that could be a thing, you know. Okay. How do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything to be honest with you. So, um, yeah. Shall we uh, shall we leave that one there? Yeah. No problem. Uh, yeah. Horrorofgaming.co.uk, another plug yeah. there. <laughs> Go to that website. Well, I think we f yeah, I think we fit in quite a few, so yeah, yeah. check that one out. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is us signing off, so uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and good night. Good night, everyone. Okay, there's, there's that done.